In this video, we're gonna talk about something that runs rampant. This is like a virus that runs rampant within the music community, particularly the guitar community, and that is gear snobbery. But before we dive into that, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. You can also unlike the video and you don't have to subscribe. That's completely up to you. But let's just jump right into it. So I was thinking about this this week about um, some past things, uh, stories in my life as a musician, in my uh, career as a musician of gear snobbery. And I have to confess that in some levels, I was a gear snob um, in years past. And so I wanted to kind of share a couple maybe anecdotal stories about that and why being a gear snob is not a good idea. Um, so what is gear snobbery? Gear snobbery is basically this idea that your your gear that you're playing with i think somehow has an effect on how good of a player you are so like something that's just beneath me i'm not going to play a squire that's beneath my level of playing i'm not going to play an epiphone that's beneath my level of playing or whatever the case is um you know when i was growing up i was actually given a aria pro 2 les paul and for I played that guitar for probably 20 years before I realized that that was an amazing guitar. I had never heard of an Aria Pro 2. You know, this is pre-internet days. So I had not really done research into, you know, what I couldn't even do research into how good of a guitar this was. Somebody in my church just gave it to me. I, now I realize that it's actually they're on par with a Gibson Les Paul. But I didn't really know that. I still played it, but I almost kind of felt subconscious about it. Like, you know, whenever I would pull it out and play, uh, play somewhere, I'd kind of feel like, are people judging me because this isn't a Gibson? And for a number of years was mostly a acoustic guitar player. And then eventually I really got into electric guitars. And then those first few years of getting into electric, I was kind of building up my collection and buying a few guitars and I had definitely had gear snobbery because I would um, I was even teaching guitar at the time. And so I'd, I'd play a lot of different instruments uh, for my students. And sometimes I would come across an instrument, you know, whether it be a squire or uh, an Epiphone or uh, uh, maybe a, a lesser expensive guitar you know, a sub 2000 or a sub thousand dollar guitar. And I would kind of think like, man, actually, this is a good instrument, but I would never buy one myself um, until finally one day I just decided, you know what? I, I don't own a Strat and I'm going to buy a Strat just to see if I like them. And I just went on Craigslist and bought an $80 Squire Stratocaster uh, and picked it up. And and I, I was like, man, this is actually a good guitar. And so my thought process started to change. Now, mind you, this is at the beginning of YouTube. This is probably about 10 or 12 years ago. So this is the beginning of, of kind of the guitar YouTube world and uh, not nearly, you know, it, the number of videos that are out there that are right now. And they're very much in that time was this idea that if you're a really good player, you're going to play something named brand. Um, of course, the gear wasn't as good back then, you know, so if you had a Line 6 Spider Amp, that is, you know, right now, Line 6 Helix is <laughs> light years beyond the technology from the Spider. Um, but, you know, there was kind of this idea of like, oh, you're playing a Line 6 or, oh, you're playing a Squire or you're playing a whatever the case is. And it's not just for guitar players, it's for everybody. So now here's the danger with the gear snobbery. Number one. Um, the, the thing that makes you the best player is this little thing called practice and practice is paramount. If you're not practicing, if you have not practiced, if you think that a piece of gear is going to make you a better player, I'm sorry to say you are, you are sadly mistaken. It might be easier. You know, if you if you have a, a, a really nice playing guitar it might be easier to practice than just like a, a chunk of wood with some strings on it but i'm telling you those hard yards on playing guitar uh practicing it wood shedding it just just working through all that is going to give you a far greater benefit 
than just buying a piece of gear. Now, before I move on, I don't want to put anybody down if they feel like if they do have nice gear. You know, even if you're a beginner, you know, if you're like, hey, I've got the money and I want to I, I wanted to go buy a Gibson Les Paul because I've seen people play them and I think they look cool. And, you know, I've got three thousand to drop on this and this is my first guitar. By all means, go out and do it. I don't want anybody to feel bad for doing that. I don't have that kind of money to drop on a guitar, uh, but I understand that some people do. So don't feel bad about that. But realize that that guitar does not make you a better player. So a couple of examples of this. I remember when I was um, and uh, we first started our church in Houston and, you know, we didn't have hardly anybody at the church. It was just me leading praise and worship. And um, so, you know, if any musician or singer came that could hold the tune or play a chord, I was like, yes, you can be on the team. Well, we had this guy come. And, uh, you know, we, uh, he came one Sunday, took him out to lunch and man, he was just talking all kinds of, uh, uh, of business about how, uh, how good of a bass player he was, but he kept on coming back to talking about his bass. Okay. So, and, and he would say, yeah, I played with so-and-so and I played with so-and-so and there was like some actually like in the church world, some like gospel names that he played with. And I was like, wow, actually, you know, man, maybe this guy is like, you know, like a, a Abraham Labroyal or something like I got my man, this is going to be awesome. And uh, so he was describing this custom bass that he had, you know, multiple thousands of dollars. I'm not sure how much it'd be a six string bass that he, that he had. And I was just excited, you know, that he was part of the team. So um, at the time we were just doing rehearsals of the house and cause it was just me. And so I said, come on over and we'll, we'll play. And so I, and he said, well, you know, I, I don't, I just, I don't play. Um, I can't read music. I, you know, I, you know, and I, I said, okay, that's fine. Most guitar players don't know how to read music. So, um, you know, I thought it was just chord charts, no big deal. So we started to, to play and I, I gave him, I had music for him, just chord charts. And, and the way that I write chord charts, I try to make them as simple as possible. So I handed him the chord charts and he was like, okay, well, you know, I don't really read music. And I realized like, oh, when he says he doesn't read music, like he, he can't even read a chord chart. So I was like, okay, okay. All right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm thinking maybe he's just got this ear. That's just awesome. So, um, we started to play and I remember the song we were playing. This is in 2005. It was shout to the Lord. And, um, he was just completely lost. And I was like, okay, well, we're, we're, we're in the key of, I don't remember what it was at the time. I was like, we're in the key of E or whatever we were playing in. And, uh, and he was like, oh, okay. And I could tell everything was going over his head. Everything was going over his head. But man, when he pulled out that bass, it looked beautiful. I mean, he, he had the confidence pulling it out of like a real good player. Um, and then it was, it was about probably 20 minutes into the rehearsal when I, when I, when I, you know, he was, she was fiddling it out and, and I said, Hey, no, 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 that's a, you know, that's, that's an F sharp there. And he was like, what, what note is that? And I realized when he said he doesn't read music, he does not know how to play the bass guitar. And he was, I think that in a lot of ways, at some point he got that guitar and I don't know if it was given to him or if he saved up for it or whatever the case was, but he got that guitar and he associated his playing ability with the quality of instrument that he was playing. And those are two completely different things. So the player and the, the level of playing and the level of, of guitar you're playing are not the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, if you've got a, whatever instrument you're playing, you've got a Nord uh, stage three keyboard that doesn't make you a great keyboard player. You know, if you've got, uh, you know, just an, an amazing drum set or whatever the case is, that does not make you an amazing drummer. Uh, it is the practice that you put into playing that causes that. A number of years ago, I had a friend uh, that that I talked to, and he was like, "Man, I got to tell you the story." I was, and he barely like he can strum like five chords on the guitar, and he he said, "I got to tell you the story." I went over. Uh, my my grandfather was getting really old, and he was he was getting ready to pass away. And so I kind of went to his house to say his, my final goodbyes to him. And he was actually a singer more, more than a musician. He was just a singer. 
And he said, you know, I went, went there and my dad, our grandfather was laying in the, in the bed and he said, Hey, there's a guitar case over, over there. I want you to, I want you to have that guitar. And, and he said, all right, you know, man, I, thanks grandpa. I appreciate that. And, and he said, open it up and he opened it up and it was a fifties Les Paul guitar. And I'm not sure what year it was, but it was, I mean, this thing was worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking like, man, you want to, I'll trade you a couple of guitars for it. Uh, it'd have been great. But uh, he ended up, he was, uh, if he'd have said to himself, hey, this guitar, this is, this guitar makes me a better player that'd have been a bad road to go down. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd make this video. I had a few minutes and, uh, I'm testing out a new lens on my camera as well. So anyway, I wanted to make this video to, to, to help all of us in the guitar world practice, practice, practice makes all the difference. The level of guitar that you have does not make you a better player. A better player is going to have be able to play a better guitar better, but it, that guitar does not make you in and of itself a better player without the practice that goes along with it. Kenneth Russell out. Thank you so much for watching. I wanted to thank everybody that supports me on Patreon, all my patrons out there. It's because of you that I'm able to make videos and I really, really appreciate that. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already and like this video or give it a thumbs down, whichever one you want. Kenneth Russell out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video.